Yeah, hi everybody, Dr. Jason W. Morrison, Theologist, New South Wales, Australia. Protesters at Jehovah Witnesses Convention in Vancouver demand action against alleged abuse. Natasha Peters alleges she was abused by a Jehovah Witness elder when she lived in Belgium in the 1970s. A small group of protesters spoke out against the alleged abuse within the Jehovah Witnesses at one of the religious group's annual conventions in Vancouver on Sunday. Natasha Peters was among them. Now 50, she says she was abused by an elder within the church when she lived in Belgium as a youth. I was abused since I was a baby until 13 years old, she said. The two witness rule. Peters said that she said when she came forward with the abusers, she was dismissed. She says the church has a rule that wrongdoing can only be established on the basis of the testimony from two or three witnesses to a, the same incident. Just want to say, when... Um, Abel, Cain killed Abel. God dealt with that on his own. When David killed Uriah, God dealt with that on his own. And there's multiple other areas where God dealt with things individually. I was alone. It was my word against his. I can't do anything, she said. He's an adult. He said nothing happened, so nothing happened. The two class action lawsuits in Canada have been filed against the Jehovah Witnesses, one in Ontario, a second lawsuit in Quebec. The suits accuse Jehovah's Witnesses of failing to protect victims of sexual abuse. In Vancouver on Sunday, 8,500 church members attended a three-day conference at the Vancouver Convention Centre with the theme of being courageous, and they're as gutless as anything, these people. Jehovah's Witnesses spokesman, Chas Harrison. Now, Chas Harrison has made himself a liar, and I'm going to add a video from the runaway slave 4747, who was an ex-elder and a media person who was an ex-media person for the Jehovah Witness speaker, um, says, and Chad Harrison says he is unaware of the two-witness rule, the little liar, but that the church, a denomination of Christianity that has does not have 8.5 million at all. It doesn't. Members worldwide takes allegations of abuse seriously. Abuse, if the case, if this was the case, that would be a matter for the secular authorities in which we would hand it over to them. This guy is a liar, an absolute utter liar. And what worries me is there's a child standing right behind him. And this is what Chad Harris said, he's a liar. In 2017, a Royal Commission in Australia investigated allegations of child sexual abuse on children in institutions like churches. It highlighted the two-witness rule and found that as long as policies like it were in place, the relevant organisation could not adequately respond to child sexual abuse and could not protect children. A 2016 report in Australia found that Jehovah Witnesses in the country failed to report 1,006 cases of child sexual abuse, some dated back more than 60 years. Peters, who now lives in Revelstoke, BC, says she wants more victims to come forward to speak out about abuse in the church. I'm going to put on now the runaway slave, and I hope you enjoy his video. Please do subscribe to his channel, and um, he's a terrific... Uh, ex-Jehovah Witness elder with a very intelligent mind and he knows how to share his experiences in a way that you can relate to and connect with. I'll put on now the Runaway Slave video. Thank you. Here he is. Here's his channel. Runaway Slave hash 4747. Enjoy this video. It is a fantastic insight behind the scenes as a Jehovah Witness elder, ex-Jehovah Witness elder. Here he goes. Hello guys, I was actually going to hold off for about a month before I made my next video. And why is that stopped? And why can't I fix it? Hang on. Oh. And then I started watching uh, the Enjoy. courageous men and women that went to the Vancouver Convention Center to be a voice to all the innocent victims of Watchtower policy, to be advocates for all those that have been collateral damage by the Watchtower. And let me tell you, uh, the theme of the convention was be courageous. And the courage that I saw was with the group of people that spoke up, that were not only showing witnesses, the public, the news, what actually goes on behind watchtower doors? And I'm just amazed at your courage. Natasha Peters, uh, your testimony 
uh, I just uh, couldn't, couldn't fight back the tears. I knew you were molested, but to hear you tell it and to see your face, and it just, it just made me feel so, so proud. I mean, you were courageous, and you were speaking out for the thousands and thousands of other victims. Uh, I couldn't believe uh, there was some footage where uh, Stacy, Stacy is surrounded by almost a hundred men. And of course there were others uh, that were surrounded by uh, what I call the watchtower goons. But uh, that was courage. And what I'd like to do is talk a little bit about being courageous versus being a lying coward. So I've already talked about how courageous uh, these individuals were, my, my, my dear friends, uh, and there were there were many of them, uh, not in large numbers, but uh, in a small group, they were able to give a big shout out and uh, let people know what really goes on behind the ugly watchtower doors. But I want to talk about the other side, the contrast. You see, there is a contrast between being courageous. And that contrast that I want to focus on is being a lying coward. So let's just talk about the individual. Well, Mr. Harrison, I believe it's Chaz Harrison, you wanted to be a spokesman for the Watchtower. Well, I'm going to pick on you. Because what you did was lied not only to the news crew, but to the community and to people within the organization that would watch that news footage. So let me tell you a little bit about public information. I know it very well. I actually went to a training on how to be a public information officer, a PIO. I went to Anniston, Alabama, and I was trained uh, with many people. And one of the things we learned was how to set up a hospital incident command system. So if there's a disaster or if there's some sort of terrorist attack, a mass casualty incident, our hospital can set up an incident command. And we have an incident commander, a planning chief. We have a security director. And of course, I was the public information officer. Now, one of the things they taught me was every time I go to the briefing room, which is a big newsroom, and there are role players, there, there are reporters, and there's, there's cameras, there's a lectern, there's a microphone. It's very intimidating. And every three hours during our disaster drill, which was a plant that exploded, I would have to go and brief the news media. And of course, I would also have to field calls when newspapers would call. And so one of the things that you never want to do is lie to the news media. You never want to give false information. If you don't know the answer, deflect. If they ask a question and it's not your scope, deflect. I'll give you an example. There were three individuals that had to meet for our first briefing. And there were about 15 people in this room and uh, most of them were reporters. And there were three representatives three public information officers. One was your field information officer, uh, the public health information officer, and then I was the hospital public information officer. So I was the last one to get on the lectern, stand behind the lectern. And what I do is just tell the community through the news what our hospital is doing to care not only for the victims uh, that were affected by the explosion, but how we're caring for people in the community as well. So I'm done. And then people start raising their hands. And I'll never forget one guy, he was a reporter, uh, and they make up these news channels. He said, well, is it true that two firefighters lost their lives uh, during the extrication of individuals? Now, I wasn't field incident command. So what I did was politely say, sir, I don't have the answer to that question. I'm going to have to refer you to Field Incident Command. And then there was another person that asked a question that was not in my scope. 
And so I just said, I, I do not have the answer to that. Then we were all released. But what I learned is you don't make things up and you don't lie. And they helped us to appreciate uh, what happens. They actually showed us a video where a public information officer for a fire department actually just made something up and it backfired on him. And it was so bad that he lost his job. So when you stand in front of a camera and share information, you better not lie and you better not make anything up. Now, I was looking, uh, I have everything when it comes to all the convention assignments. I got rid of all my literature, but for some reason I thought I'd keep all of this. Now, I used to be the platform overseer, and at every convention, they list all the departments. And what I noticed was, they don't have a public information department. It's called the News Service Department. Now, under the qualifications, and it's right here, uh, you have to be a qualified appointed elder. You can't be a rank and file member. You have to be a qualified appointed elder. You can't be a sister. Now how does that contrast with our hospital? Because we have an incident command system. Uh, for example, when we had uh, our tornadoes, uh, we had several tornadoes. We set up an incident command system. I was not in the area where I could be a public information officer. So they had another person, it was a female nurse, sit in my chair and she looked at all the operating procedures, what she had to do in case she had to uh, speak to the media. So there is a contrast. In Watchtower World, the public information officer or the spokesman or the news service officer has to be an appointed elder, a man, okay? It's totally different from the hospital setting and other settings. In fact, uh, we had some fires a couple weeks ago. And uh, on the news, one of the public information officers was a female firefighter. So uh, there is a contrast. Now, one of the things that I noticed that Mr. Harrison did when asked about the two witness rule was flat out lied. And uh, Chaz Harrison... I just made you famous. Not for being courageous, but for being a coward and a liar. You see, that's what's good about uh, YouTube. You see, if you want to get on the news and you want to flat out lie, people are going to call you out. And I'm calling you out, Mr. Harrison. You wanted to be part of the news services. You wanted to be a spokesman for the convention. So let's talk about it. You're an appointed elder, a qualified appointed elder. And when they asked you about the two witness rule, you didn't know anything about it. Are you kidding me? Come on. When you were appointed an elder, and I don't know how long you were an elder, you were given a book, Shepherd the Flock of God. And you know what it says in that book. If a family comes with their child, and that child is the victim of sexual molestation. Somebody in the congregation molested her. You know that she has to have a second witness. And yet you lied to the media. And of course, not just the media, you lied to everyone that watches that newscast. Shame on you. You're a coward and a liar. Let me ask you this, Mr. Harrison, because you wanted to be a spokesman. You're qualified. You're an appointed elder. You should know your information. Are you telling me you don't know the policy where a family comes to a group of men, elders, and they say that their son or daughter has been molested? You don't know the policy where you're supposed to say, well, before we go any further, we need to call the branch. We need to call the legal department. Are you kidding me, Mr. Harrison? I'm making you famous. You wanted to be in front of the camera. But you lied. And you were a coward. All you had to do was say, you know, that's an interesting question. What if I just have you uh, ask that to 
the branch office. I'm going to have to refer you to the branch office. You didn't even do that. You flat out lied. And it makes me sick. And this is why the whole thing makes me sick. This convention was supposed to be about being courageous. You didn't show any courage. Natasha Peters showed courage. All of my good friends that went and spoke up showed their banners and uh, were advocates for the many, many victims of watchtower abuse, whether it be shunning, the blood doctrine, and the pedophile problem that truly exists in the Watchtower organization. They're the ones that were courageous. And you, Mr. Harrison, the guy that wanted to be in front of the camera, just flat out lies. You're a liar and a coward. Now, in conclusion, I'm going to sum it up this way. A while back, one of your governing body members had this to say about uh, apostates. He said, when it comes to child abuse allegations, apostates are lying. That's what he said. I believe it was Stephen Lett. Well, Stephen Lett, uh, one of your public information officers, I'm sorry, one of your news service officers, one of your convention spokesmen, actually did the lying. Your organization is ugly. Sure, you promise, you promise wonderful things in the future, but all you're really promising is six feet of dirt. That's all you have to offer. And it's disgusting the way the Watchtower organization does business because you really do not care about all the innocent victims of your policies. Well, guys, I just had to shoot this video out. I, I usually don't rant, uh, but this, this guy who flat out lied, he's an appointed elder. He knows the policies. And when he told that reporter, he knows nothing about the two witness rule. It made me sick to my stomach. I try not to rant, but uh, I did. Well, guys, I'm going to let you go. And I'm actually going to take about a month off. Uh, I hope everybody continues to do well. And uh, again, I'm so proud of all of those that uh, were able to speak up for the many victims of Watchtower policy. Chaz, where you been? I've been trying to get a hold of you for the last couple days. Yes, uh, at our last study, I told you I had never been to one of these uh, seminars. And I mentioned uh, some of my concerns. First and foremost was that I'm not familiar with the building. Uh, what do you call the building? Uh, convention Center? Yeah, Dr. Jason Morrison, Theologist again. I just want to say thank you for watching the videos and I uh, hope you got plenty of uh, self-rediscovery and freedom out of it. If you watched it on YouTube, please share or like. Um, maybe even comment if you watch it on Facebook. Like, comment, share. Um, but most of all, get out and live. This isn't a rehearsal. You've got a one-off life. Don't let your loyalty and your faithfulness blind you to the life that you should be experiencing. Till the next video, thank you for watching and bye for now.